I'm Juliette Morris and welcome to the last in the current series of The Travel Show. Tonight the focus is on special interest and activity holidays. Over the last couple of years there's been a real change in the travel market. Rather than just lie on a beach, more and more of us are itching to do something, indulging in our hobbies or perhaps trying out new ones. Well this week I've come to the Cayman Islands to let the uninitiated into my passion, the wonderful world of diving. Later in the program, what it's like to throw yourself in the deep end and try something new. PR woman Lisa Tehar did just that. Lisa tells us more about how she really found it. And our two travellers, Simon Calder and Fee Glover, give us their verdicts on the best of the activity holidays they've tried this year. Goodness, I've had this much fun since I left the SAS. <laughs> But first, if you've ever considered taking the plunge, literally, here's my no-fuss guide to what's what in diving. The Cayman Islands lie in the Western Caribbean, about an hour's flight south of Miami. I stayed on Grand Cayman, the largest of the three islands. I've flown direct to Grand Cayman from Gatwick. I'm on a dive-inclusive package, and I'm here to show you just what you can expect. And if you're anything like me, you'll get hooked. The Cayman Islands lie in America's backyard, a playground for the rich and the infamous. A country no bigger than the Isle of Wight, it's the world's fifth largest banking center, so it'll come as no surprise to learn it has a reputation for being pretty glamorous and pricey. But if you come to seek out its other offshore assets, it is possible to keep the costs down. Package deals are one option, and there's guest house and B&B &B accommodation available. This is Sunset House. It was set up largely to cater for divers. Now, I booked my dive package back in Britain, but you don't have to do that. You can turn up at this hotel or others on the island, and the local dive operators are bound to be able to accommodate you. If you come to the Caribbean, though, you must always bear in mind it can rain very hard. One minute brilliant sunshine, the next pouring. But for diving, obviously, that doesn't matter. And the great thing about this place is that you can walk out your front door, plop in the sea, and there it all is. Though you may well have to endure the odd shower, the island's location means they're protected from the worst storms. What do you think is kind of the good qualification for a person to have to be able to dive? What sort of a person do you need to be? Or Just can a good attitude, it? really. I mean, if you set your mind to it, anybody will do it, as long as they have a good attitude. If they're forced into doing something you don't want to do, then obviously they're not going to have a good time or Mm. you know, accomplish their goal. The only thing you have to do is swim 200 yards. There's no time limit. Mm. So if you want to do the backstroke for those 200 yards, so be it. You just yeah. have to Because it's, it's about buoyancy, really, and that kind of thing, isn't it? Rather yeah. than being able to be brilliant at breaststroke or... You don't have to be Mark Spitz, that's for sure. Who's Mark Spitz? He's the guy who won that gold medal in the United States for freestyle sport. Oh, I guess he, I guess he'd have to be American. <laughs> If you do the resort course and you find you want more, then you can go on to get your certification, which basically means you can dive without an instructor holding your hand. Now, there are two main organizations that do that, the American Paddy Group and the British club, BZAC. The Paddy course takes about five days, and BZAC have just launched a new, very similar course that takes about the same amount of time. Learning to dive isn't just about having fun in the pool or the sea. You have to spend half your time in the classroom learning the theory behind diving. Obviously, safety is of paramount importance. If you don't know what you're doing, it can be potentially dangerous. So they teach you all the basics of that. They also teach you how important your buddy is. That is the person that you dive with. Obviously, if there are problems, you can help them. They can help you. And at the end, you have to do a test. But believe me, it's not very difficult. And remember, it's a marine park, okay? No touching, no teasing, no harassing, no amputation of any marine life whatsoever. You can do that to your buddy, and you can do it to the staff, but we bite back, but keep the marine life alive and well for the next generation. Number two, <laughs> gotta have a buddy. Same day, same ocean does not apply in our scenario. You can't get to your buddy within one breath, okay? You're too far away. All right, so please stay close to your buddy. 
If I see something I think is really cool and I want you to see it, um, I'll say, you look at that and point it out to you. If you're not sure what it is, say, what is it? And if I can't make you understand underwater, I'll say, remember it, and I'll tell you, what it, tell you about it on the boat. Okay. Any questions, statements, or concerns? No. Then the big pool's open. There's nothing quite like it, and for me, diving is the ultimate in relaxation. These waters are a real mecca for divers of all standards. Last year, over 150,000 divers visited the islands. Every dive site is different. In the Cayman Islands, you probably won't meet as many big fish like sharks and manta rays as you might in, say, the Maldives, but here you're treated to some lovely coral gardens and tons of marine life. And the water is clean and clear. After a day or two out here in the big blue, I can guarantee you'll be swapping stories with your fellow amphibians. Terms like sponge barrels, sea fans and whip corals are bound to seep into your vocabulary. And if it's the thought of all that cold seawater that's keeping you from seeking harmony with the deep, then rest assured, this is as warm as a baby's bathwater. I wear a wetsuit largely for protection against something like a jellyfish sting. Though it's unlikely to be uppermost in your mind as you marvel at the world around you, the Cayman Islands are among the safest dive spots in the world and have their own decompression chamber. Unfortunately, what goes down has to come up, and just as you think you could stay here forever, it's time to resurface. That barracuda is not so mean, he's lovely. He's horrible. He's beautiful. I've just given this barracuda a really filthy look. <laughs> They're so <laughs> ugly. The food here in Grand Cayman isn't wildly exciting. It's very Americanized. This place is only around 500 miles or so from the States, so there are a lot of hamburgers and that kind of thing kicking around. But if you look hard enough, you can find lovely places where the locals eat, and they serve food like this, fish tea, which is fish soup, and it's gorgeous. Turtles are a popular local snack here, but I prefer to see them in a tank than in my soup. This commercial turtle farm, in fact, releases thousands of them into the sea each year. Other things to do on land in Grand Cayman include a visit to this huge new botanical garden, highlighting the flora and fauna of the islands. And there's some seriously laid-back beach life to be enjoyed. There's also a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to go to hell. This Cayman village, nestling amongst some really weird limestone rock formations, offers a unique postcard opportunity. And if you come here, you really must do this. It's a brilliant experience. <laughs> um, and I was quite frightened at first. But, oh look, it's somebody coming to see us. Um, but you get a bit braver and, um, ooh. <laughs> I think I need to go back for some more, actually. These creatures are so used to human contact, it can be overwhelming, but it's all perfectly safe, though the stingrays do occasionally give you a nasty suck. I 
could have gone diving somewhere like the Red Sea, which is cheaper and closer to home. But I wanted to try the Cayman Islands because they're supposed to be one of the top spots in the Caribbean. And the diving here is lovely. There are some beautiful, huge coral walls that you can dive down, coral gardens, loads of fish, tunnels you can swim through. The operation here, the dive operation, is also very good. If you can afford it and you want to learn, then I think you'd be in very safe hands. As far as other things to do on Grand Cayman go, well, there are golf courses and there are a few tourist sites, but I mean, if I wasn't diving or snorkeling, I think I'd get bored. But if that's what you want to do and you want the Caribbean experience, then I think you'd be happy here. My dive package cost £995. That included flights, transfers, accommodation, and of course the diving. That price is with specialist dive tour operator J&J &J Travel until December the 14th. If you're an absolute beginner, training for your Paddy Open Water Certificate qualification costs £184. Over the summer, Feet Lover and Simon Calder have checked out a number of special interest holidays, from surfing in Cornwall to cooking in Thailand. If you're planning a bit more than just a couple of weeks lying on the beach next summer, here's Fee and Simon's own guide to what's what in the world of action holidays.